Community Church of Austin, we're going to please rise and sing um, in the sanctuary. Christ consciousness is here, lifting us to our own Christ consciousness, to a higher consciousness connecting us to the oneness with our Creator, that which I call God or divine love. Please join me now in a time of prayer. I invite you to take in a breath of light. As you do, feel the power and presence of God, infinite goodness dwelling within you. Know that in your being, you are a magnificent expression of God co-creating a magical world, a world that at its core manifests a world united by divine love. With all that we are, we surrender to this divine light. There is nothing or no one against us. And so we know that the fullness of God fills us with God's presence. We are ever so very, very, very grateful. In the name and nature of the indwelling Christ presence, we say, and so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Please stand and join us in singing in this moment. In this moment, God is all there is. In this moment, God is all there is. In this moment, God is all there is. I claim it to be so. 
and so it is in this body God is all there is in this body God is all there is in this body God is all there is I claim it to be so join me in our blessing of all faiths. God is God. <laughs> our God is love. Our, our race, race is, is human, human. And, and our, our religion, religion is oneness. oneness. Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> Just excited about that music. Good morning and welcome to Unity of Austin. We are an open-hearted spiritual community and we offer a positive, inclusive, progressive approach to Christianity based on the power 
of prayer and the teachings of Jesus the Christ. Unity of Austin honors the universal truths in all religions and respects the right to choose a spiritual path. And we welcome everyone to join us as we study, teach, and live these principles. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or online, we're glad you've joined us today. And if you're here in the sanctuary for the first time, we have a welcome bag we would like to give you. And if you did not receive it from one of the ushers when you came in, please check with them after service in the lobby. <clears throat> and in the bag is a form you can take to the bookstore and receive a gift from Unity of Austin. And we have quite a few announcements today. So stand by. <clears throat> one of them is we have a new member class starting on Sunday, May 19th and May 26th after church in the gathering room. And registration is currently open. And if you're not a member, we encourage you to consider becoming one. And save the date for Wednesday, April 17th, that's this Wednesday, Reverend Jay Whitmire of the Lombard Mennonite Peace Center will be hosting a one-day seminar on restorative conversations. That'll take place here at Unity of Austin in the gathering room. And this is a full day training and will introduce attendees and community leaders alike to be ambassadors for reconciliation. The workshop will take place from 9 to 4, and the cost for the training is $125 and will include presentation and handouts. Seats are limited, and if you're interested in attending, please reserve your seat as soon as possible. <clears throat> and next Sunday is Hat Sunday, and that means that the Sisters of Myrtle Fillmore will be meeting the following Monday, that is April 22nd, in the gathering room at 7 p.m. And even if you're not a sister of Myrtle Fillmore, you can still sport your favorite hat and remind everyone that the sisters will be meeting the following Monday. And yes? Oh, it's tomorrow night. My mistake. There's only one hat in the sanctuary. Two. Actually, I see two hats. Thank you for wearing your hats. Four. All right. <clears throat> Correction, and we'll move on. Tomorrow night, <laughs> tomorrow night, <laughs> here in the gathering room at 7 p.m. <laughs> and um, next Sunday and every first and third Sunday at 10 a.m., learn to connect with others and expand your circle of friends by learning the basics of American Sign Language. This is a free class and is offered by Gigi Garrido who is the Unity of Austin American Sign Language Interpreter. And we appreciate Gigi for offering her services and making it easy to learn the basics. Again, this is next Sunday and the first and third Sunday of every month at 10 a.m. Classes are kept simple and last for about a half an hour. And <clears throat> this is just a reminder that in addition to the youth and family ministry having classes for pre-K through elementary age children on Sundays at 11 a.m., they also have the Uniteens for middle school and high school age students. They meet every Wednesday evening from 6.30 until 8 p.m. And if you know of anyone with middle age or high school age children, please invite them to join the fun and fellowship. You can also see the spark for more information. And <clears throat> Sunday, May 5th, we get to show our appreciation and celebrate Micah LaGrave for Micah it will be ending his internship here at Unity of Austin as he is, will be graduating uh, from becoming a, for becoming a minister. So thank you, Micah. <clears throat> Again, that's going to be May 5th, and Unity of Austin will have a Unity of Austin potluck celebration, and it'll be a lot of fun, and I hope everyone plans to attend. And <clears throat> after service today, uh, our prayer chaplain, Sabrina Harris, will be available to pray with anyone who has a prayer that they would like uplifted. And Sabrina's looking at me as she remembers she has an announcement she would like to make. Uh, about next Sunday as well. Good morning, family. Good morning. Thanks. And so 
<laughs> uh, I wanted to just remind you that next Sunday, the 21st, we do have uh, Travis County uh, Sheriff uh, Deputy Terry Wilt will be coming to give a presentation, an active shooter presentation. And we just think that's important for our congregation to have that awareness and knowledge. And so we'll have that in the gathering room after church. It'll be 1230 to 130. And we will also have a light lunch available. So you don't have to leave. You can just <laughs> go straight to the gathering room after service and grab your, grab your lunch and, and uh, listen to the presentation. This is the first step in towards us building our safety committee. So you've heard me mention we want to have a safety committee as well. We do need a church mem a member of the church uh, to participate as the chair of that committee. So think about that, pray on that. And we will also need, uh, and of course, you don't have to be a member to serve on the committee, but uh, we just need a member who, who's willing to chair the committee. So think about that. And uh, we're still working out exactly what the duties are and things like that of the safety committee. Lastly, I just want to mention that you know, we, we have hired our new uh, senior minister, Pastor Leslie, and uh, we want to acknowledge the people who brought that together. So next Sunday, we just want to acknowledge the uh, search, the ministerial search committee. They did a lot of work to get things started for us. So we're going to do that next Sunday. It'll, it'll, it won't be that long, but just want to let you know that. And that's all I have. Thanks so much. I have a quick announcement, Marlo. Go ahead. Um, you may have noticed that we have a bass player up here with us. <laughs> this is Ting Vanderweid, and she has offered her time and exquisite talent to our music team. So if you noticed a little extra something, something, that's Ting. Thanks. Thank you, team. Um, and with that, we can now meet and greet the Christ in each other.
They're having fun over there. You may be seated. <laughs> Sunday, April 14th. Our daily word is healing. And today we affirm God's healing power is moving through me. And our message reads, I am open and receptive to God's healing power within me and within my dear ones. I trust with absolute faith that God is greater than any worldly condition. I cannot limit God. I listen to the still, small voice within and feel guided along my healing journey. If fear and worry get the better of me and I start to feel anxious, I call forth the healing power of the indwelling Christ. I spiritually surrender my concerns. When I pray for my dear ones, I do not focus on their condition. Rather, I see them as the divine beings they are, whole, prosperous, and spiritually perfect. As I pray, I perceive God's healing presence moving through me and my beloveds. This presence is the health beyond the illness, the abundance beyond the insufficiency, and the life beyond death. It is the truth of my life. Our Bible verse for today is from Isaiah 58, 8. Your healing shall spring up quickly. Now let us prepare for meditation. With our hearts open wide, I invite you to close your eyes or lower your gaze if you feel comfortable doing so. Take a good deep breath in. Feel your lungs expand. 
and that joyful breath in of life. Feel your body resting comfortably where you are, fully supported. And take now time to draw your attention into the center space of your heart. And see there this light. And for us, sometimes this light feels small and sometimes this light feels big. And for the moment right now, we're going to start small and we're going to grow it in our mind's eye because this light truly, really can't be contained. And so see it almost like a lightning bug out in the field in spring as the sun is set. And you can see that little glow just pulsating. That light is you. That light is me. That light is all of us. I want you to feel that light expand from your heart space, through your lungs, through your other internal organs. Feel that warmth grow and glow. Feel that light extending past our torso, extending through our limbs, our hands, our feet, to the tips of our fingers, to the ends of our toes even as we're sensing some movement of that light in our body, perhaps some tingling, perhaps some warmth, and perhaps just the comfort in knowing that it is only there. It never goes out. It never gets extinguished. And feel that light expanding beyond your human body. Feel it reaching out and touching to your neighbors beside you. Feel it touching the neighbors a few seats away. Feel it touching, if you're here in this building, those filling up with gas at the 7-Eleven just at the end of the block. If you're in our online community, perhaps It's expanding outside of your household or outside of your car to the next nearest heartbeat. And as it touches the next heartbeat, imagine that expanding from our heart space through that heart space, out of that heart space to more heart spaces. And see this light growing through our communities, through our cities, through our states, or however it is we decide to define that bit of border so that we could keep our human selves orderly, but knowing that no matter what we call these different expanses of seeming territory, that with light there is none of that, really that we expand beyond that, beyond our country, beyond the waters that separate us. So we're hopping across the pond, so to speak, to more heart spaces. And we're seeing those hearts feel that love, that warmth, and igniting and growing beyond their heart space. And at this point, we can sense that the earth is all aglow, full of love, full of warmth, full of light, so that perhaps we're reflecting the the radiance that comes from the sun. 
that amazingness that reminds us of our light within. And in this moment of being in the presence and being light, let's just sit in that and love on it and take it in in a couple of moments of silence. holding the sacredness of this light in ourselves and in each other and in the world of around us. I invite you to have a little more awareness of that light throughout the week. Shine it brightly, full of love and peace, imagination and excitement. As we close, I invite you to, if you're comfortable, to bring your awareness back to the space. You may open your eyes if you choose to, or you may stay in a meditative space as we prepare to sing the Lord's Prayer together. And as we're singing the Lord's Prayer, knowing that in this light we are affirming the wonderful affirmations that are unfolded within this music.
This song is called What Was I Made For from the Barbie movie, <clears throat> written by Billie Eilish. And though not all the words really track, because they are some of them written specifically for the movie, I feel like there's a little something in it for everyone. Last week, we talked about getting into prayer as we're going through our creative process. And, excuse me, I can tell I'm going to need this in a second. Um, and that prayer, that, that part where we're in this seemingly chaotic state, is, is the time where we can sit and begin that centering in. 
And so today we're moving into light. Genesis 1, 3 through 5. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning. And this was the first day. One of our Unity co-founders, Myrtle Fillmore, shares with us this about light. When we let light flood us with its sunshine, all clouds vanish and we begin to see ourselves in new ways of doing, which leads to wholeness and health and satisfaction and growth. So today we're going to look at some key aspects of light. We're going to look at a key word that is in this scripture from today, and we're also going to look at how light relates to our creation process. So light is, there's two different aspects of it that I'm going to talk about today because they kind of intermingle and, and, um, and they, they go together. And so light is divine mind. God mind, ideas coming to us, coming forth. Divine light is also our Christ nature. The light that we meditated through and expanded beyond ourselves and out into the world. And it seems like they're separate, but they're really interconnected. And that connection, though, is us. We are that connected piece where it all comes together. And as I was reading Myrtle's quote and I was reading the scripture, there was two, there was one word that appeared in both, and it's the word let. Because in our creative process, whether we're creating for ourselves or we're creating for our community, let really is the operative word here. Because the light of God never diminishes, doesn't really fluctuate. It's always the same. It's constant, forever. And so it's our awareness that kind of can fluctuate. And so to let, to allow to be, is ours. So do we let that light express in us and through us and not try to block it, circumvent it, dismiss it, think that it's not us. And so I really kind of sat with that let word this week, and I invite you to do the same. And in this letting the light come forth, letting this light shine, we begin to participate in a process known in unity as a metaphysical trinity. We have divine idea, divine mind, and we have our idea, and we have expression. So it all starts in divine mind, and then we sense it, we get it, and we get the idea comes to our brains, and then with God expressing in us and through us, we begin to express that and make it come into being. And light is the first part in this creative process. And this is where I see myself entering a ride. It's the ride of life. It is the flow. I like to call it the flow when I'm in the creative process and I'm realizing that everything is working together. Uh, Synchronicities start to happen and we are bringing in um, teamwork and collaboration and things that we didn't think that we could do, but we can because we're in this, in this flow. And so I invite you lovingly to buckle up, buttercups. <laughs> and welcome to the ride that I like to call the flow. And in this, in this flow, you're going to find that divine downloads are going to come in faster than your brain can keep up with them. 
Your little filing cabinet in there is going to be going, okay, there's this, I'm going to put this over here. There's this one, oh, I've got to put it over here. There's this one, oh, we're going to put it over here. And then your excitement's going to go, and I want to do it all today. And then luckily, though, divine mind and our idea work together so that we can be reminded that while we are divine, we are also human, so we may need a little extra um, slowing down and tapping into that creative process of organization. Um, For those of you who might be like me that are predominantly right-brained, that organization part is uh, a work in progress. Um, It's not always the easiest. Um, A lot of people that are mostly creative tend to, um, you're going to find piles of clutter. Um, I haven't been in that office long enough, but I can promise y'all one day you're going to come in and you're going to go, Leslie, is there a desk under all those papers? And so there's those parts of us to kind of work on in this creative process as those divine ideas come in. And to know that it's okay to have an idea and, not know, and to know that you don't have to act on it right now. It was brought to you for a reason, but hold it. I have a little box on my desk at home that sparkled with golden glitter that says, shine your light. That was given to me by a dear friend of mine. And in it are my divine ideas. And in those divine ideas are things that I want to see that I know God's calling forth out of me to come into being. And I got to take a couple of those things out recently because I'm standing here. (laughs) And... Be prepared, though, for God to call you forth. And be prepared in God's calling you forth to be nudging you for things that you're like, oh, I know this is my jam. This is my thing. This is where I'm good at. And for God to be calling you to things that you're like, ah, really? Sir or madam, I am not so sure you, me? Yeah. So, and you may have to set that one in the, in the oven to bake a little while. Let it marinate. And another thing that you're going to notice is that your abundance and your perspective of abundance is going to be affected. And I say that not as necessarily always monetary abundance, But as by definition in unity, abundance is divine idea. It is those ideas and the ways to bring forth those ideas that bring about all of the things that are, that we can hold in our hands. And another thing that I want you to know about this creative process is to trust the process. I heard those words Trust the process. I don't have enough fingers and toes to count the times that I was told in ministerial school, and I'm still in it, to trust the process, Leslie. And so when I get frustrated, when I get irritated, when I um, begin to get in it, I just kind of sigh and go, trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. Okay, 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 okay. And... In this process, though, because I know a lot of times in Unity, we, um, we rainbow and butterfly things. And sometimes in our creative process, when we're creating, it's not always rainbows and butterflies. Um, one thing about me is that I like to draw. Um, and I started drawing in ink because I wanted to concentrate more on what I saw in my mind to get it to the paper. And so, I, and then when I'm working on something, I could work on it for hours and hours and hours and want to crumble it up and throw it away because I don't think it's good enough or it's not what I saw in my mind. And, and in that, um, I've got some good advice from my mom. She's like, well, Leslie, just put it down for a little while. Come back to it later. 
So I'll put it down for a few days, and I come back to it later, and I pick it up, and I'm like, oh, it like really is good. I think I might keep working on this one. And then there's times in our, in our process where we're just going through life. Um, this Billie Eilish song reminded me of that. We were kind of, you know, we're brought into a little bit of a sullen space because um, in, in our world of rainbows and butterflies, there's times when we're in the cocoon. And um, for some, it may be depression or anxiety while you're trying to work through your creative process. And I think it's important for me to be real um, when I'm up here to know that uh, we go through everything in life together. And it reminded me that um, of a quote from Rumi that I saw this week. And it says, a candle never loses any of its light when lighting another candle. And so I think in, for us, like in that creative process, when we, when we may be feeling a little not at our best or not like we're shining our light the best, that um, we're here for each other to be able to ignite and encourage, to say, yes, you can do this. Yes, we can do this. We've got this. And it reminded me last week of, let's see, Good Friday service. I was sitting on the front pew. We had our 12 power candles lit. And there was one of the candles, the second candle. And at the beginning of service, I saw it. And they were all lit. But that one, the flame would disappear to where my eye couldn't see it. And then it would reappear. And I was so amused by that because I'm going, well, the energy of that light's still there. Evidently, because it lights back up again. And I'm like, huh, okay. And then I started looking up because I'm like, where's the draft coming from that's putting out this one light? So I'm like looking at all the possibilities of why this light's doing it. And I'm, I'm, this light's like, Leslie, I'm fixing to be a point in a talk. Just bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm looking at this light going, oh, it came back on. So it's like burning. It's like normal flamey self doing its little flame dance. And then a few minutes go by, and I look up, and y'all, if you, if you weren't here, that flame ended up being this high on that candle. And I'm going, I lean over to Reverend Carol, and I'm going, do we put it out? She's like, well, let it, let, it, let it go for a little bit, see if it fixes itself. I'm like, okay. And I'm seeing how close it's getting to the greenery that's on the table <laughs> thinking about all the reports that we'd have to make to Church Mutual should something go awry with that flame that's like, da 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 and, um, and so finally we decided to go ahead and put it, put it out until it came time to relight it so we could put it out again for the means of that service. But it's interesting how that light, that candle, was the candle of strength. I'm like, huh, that's a little preach. Yeah, so strength for our 12 powers means endurance, the ability to persevere. And in our light, we have those times where our lights seem invisible, but the energy is still there. There's times when we're probably dun -dun 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 -dun, more than we probably really should. Ta-da! And that one little candle taught so much in my pondering that day of like, what's going on with this candle and finding meaning in that little bit of a candle? And um, so I, I, I want to share that with you in, in conjunction with that Billie Eilish song that um, there's part of the process. And just know that we're here for each other to support each other in our creative processes. And you're going to know this about me, and most of you probably already know, and you're getting ready for, like, what's our homework? Because <laughs> I give you something to chew on throughout the week. But our homework is cohesive, together homework, because we're creating this process for our community and what we would like to see in our community. And so there's three words that I kind of hold in that, in that thinking and that process, and that is 
be, do, and serve. Be, do, and serve. So, I have for you guys out in the gathering room, on the tables are a lot of post-it pads, enough for all the ideas, and pens. And this is what I invite you to do. And to do this the rest of the week is when you get one of those ideas, write it down on the post-it note, and then if you come back, come back next week. Online community, I did not forget about you. So if you're in our online community, because I want to know ideas for our online community as well as our in-person community. So those ideas for you guys, you can comment them in our Facebook feed for the live stream, or you can go to our website and click on the Contact Us button and just fill that out and then let know in that comment section of how may we help you. Just share that divine download with us. On your post-it notes, guys, I'm going to ask that you write your name on it. You could write it on the front. You could write it on the back. That's fine. Um, and throw those ideas up there. There's three poster boards in there. But I kind of have this feeling we're going to need more than three poster boards. But we're going to start with three. Because three, three is a good biblical number. Maybe we'll go to seven because that means completeness. We'll see. And write those ideas down. And if you have your idea and you put it up there and you see that somebody else has the same idea, please don't not put your idea on there. Because what this tells us is that the force is letting us know that this idea is really being called forth in this community. Okay? So there's some method to my madness. There's some of that organizational skills that I've been developing among this very imaginative mind. So B, do, serve, and let. Let it be. Let it come into being. Allow it to be. My friends, allow it to be. Allow the ideas from God to flood in. And like our song said before, there's nothing for us to be afraid of. So if it comes to you, put it. We'll figure out the organization later. So I'm going to close with a quote from a young poet that she has become my next favorite. Her name is Amanda Gorman. And she shared this in the poem that she gave at the inauguration of President Biden. There is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Amanda Gorman. So let those ideas come in. Let them come forth through you and shine on, y'all. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Leslie. That was awesome. Let there be light. So something that I'm taking away today is God's light is constant. And we just need to let it be. That is what is ours to do, is to let. And he also gave me a new term to think about, and that is divine download. Like that. Yep. Mm. <coughs> All right. Well, now we have an opportunity to celebrate our abundance, and I invite the ushers to come forward. And... We always keep both joy and gratitude in our hearts as we acknowledge God is the source of all the blessings in our lives. As we are open and receive prosperity, we go forth and share our blessings with others and the world. God's good is always taking place and happens through us and by us. Thank you, God, for our participation in this infinite circulation of good.
Let's rub our hands together, bless the gifts in the many ways that we shine our lights together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. This song is called I See the Light, and it's from the Disney movie Tangled by Alan Menken. All those days watching from the windows, all those years outside looking in, all that time never even knowing just how blind I've been. Now I'm here, blinking in the starlight. Now I'm here, suddenly I see. Standing here, it's all so clear. I'm where I'm meant to be. and throat announced please <laughs> we're gonna sing the kids in with the face of god Pictures. 
And so we had we had some fun with these pictures because um, we we took a blanket and put some cushions and then put it put it on the carpet and then we and then we um, flat and then we played put put the blanket up and down to make the ocean and waves and then oh, and cool. then Mika says. Um, what is yours says? Jesus and Jesus. mine says Pe Peter. So we were um, pretending to be these two. Cool. We read the story about um, when Jesus walked on the water and about like our faith. So now we we're getting, we shared also we shared about um, our acts of kindness that we received. So this week, a friend of mine gifted me a sound bath experience yesterday. Very lovely. Um, Mika, Mika's mom gifted her pretty gold bracelet that has two hearts on it. She's gonna demonstrate it for us. <laughs> And then uh, Gabriella, her friend Abigail, gave her a stuffy, which Aww. is a stuffed guinea pig for her birthday. Aww. And Reverend Carol and her husband gifted the church some beautiful roses. What? No, we were gifted the roses. Oh, last that's right, week. last week. Right. And then you, they gifted it, them. and then they planted it. Yeah in the gar church garden so we can all enjoy it. So, Aww. yes, that's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Thank you. Now is the time where we rub our hands together with vigor and excitement and bless our children. Children, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. And now we're going to bless our adults. So rub your hands together. Love you. And now adults. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. Amen. So now if you'll stand and join us as we sing the peace song and say the prayer for protection. Watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is. I am divine. And all is well. Amen. Thank you. Please join us in the gathering room for food and fellowship and post it notes. Have a great week, everybody.
Great job, Sam. Great job.